The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for your patience while we connected our last few attendees to this meeting. And welcome to the webinar on financing sustainable development in tourism SMEs. I'm uh, Cecilia lopez -Siroyo. I'm the coordinator of the 10YFP Secretariat at the UN Environment, and I will be your moderator during this session. This is the ninth uh, sustainable tourism webinar organized by UN Environment and the French government within the French frame of the 10YFP Sustainable Tourism Program. As many of you know, the 10YFP Sustainable Tourism Program is one of the six programs of the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, an implementation mechanism for SDG 12. The five other programs which focus on sustainability in the following areas, buildings and construction, food systems, consumer information, public procurement, and lifestyles and education. They all work to support the global shift to sustainable consumption and production through multi-stakeholder approaches. The Secretariat, which I represent today, is hosted by UN Environment. The 10YP Sustainable Tourism Program is really a collaborative platform which currently involves over 130 organizations with a common goal, decoupling tourism growth from the increased use of natural resources. The network offers opportunities to aggregate the efforts of members to accelerate this um, shift to sustainable consumption and production patterns, specifically in the tourism sectors, and advance the related SDGs, notably, of course, as I've mentioned already, SDG 12 on responsible consumption and production, but also SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth, SDG 13 on climate action, 14 on life below water, and 15 on life on land. So the network also offers a, a number of opportunities to all its members, for instance, to participate in public fora, discussions and debate, to gain international visibility. Uh, the network really fosters synergies of activities and the creation of a number of coalitions, whether for fundraising or other reasons. And lastly, the program also offers possibilities for its members to exchange knowledge, to learn from, uh, from other partners in the program, to share experiences and lessons learned, best practices and tools, as we will be doing throughout this webinar. Before we, would st we start, I would like to just um, recall a few tips for a smooth session uh, on GoToWebinar, the webinar platform that we are currently using. Thank you, Svetlana. <laughs> um, so all attendees um, are on listen-only mode. Attendees can say, you can, any of you can send uh, questions to any of the panelists uh, anytime during the webinar. You can post them in the question box on the control panel that you can see on the right-hand side. And at the end of the webinar, during the question and answer session that we'll have, um, we will be reading out the questions uh, that you have sent us and the panelists will share their replies. This session is being recorded, so you will receive uh, tomorrow the YouTube link with a recording of this session. Please do not hesitate, of course, in sharing this recording with any of uh, your colleagues that might be interested. The webinar Financing Sustainable Development in the Tourism SMEs aims really at raising awareness uh, of political actors, private investors, developers and operators on the need to establish financing and investment schemes for sustainable tourism development. The focus is made on small and medium enterprises as they are the backbone of the tourism industry. However, because of the lack of human and financial resource, they tend to overlook environmental and social impacts that their business decisions may have. SMEs also experience difficulties to access finance instru instruments for projects due to incomplete integration of sustainability and risk assessment in the banking system. As a consequence, it's of highest importance to enable access to financial mechanisms for sustainable and innovative uh, business models. Working with the tourism SMEs to identify the financing needs and shortcomings to facilitate a shift to sustainable consumption and production. Rethinking, for instance, financing for sustainable tourism development provides opportunities to promote innovations and may be coupled with the right, in with the right incentives for transitioning to a low-carbon green economy. 
The objective of the webinar, Financing Sustainable Development in Tourism SMEs, which we are all listening to now, are, are twofold. To present solutions that public actors in collaboration with banks may develop to support SMEs' access to finance, and share information on public and private investments and finance initiatives supporting tourism transition towards sustainable tourism development. So this said, and the introduction given to you all, we'll now move on to the first presentation of today's webinar, for which we have the pleasure to have us, among us, Ms. Virginia Robano, economist and, and external consultant at the OECD. In the past 10 years, uh, Virginia has worked at the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the OECD. She's also a member of the Compass Advisory Board on Responsible Innovation for SMEs, and teaches entrepreneurship on you have. Virginia, you have 15 minutes for your presentation. Thank you very much, Virginia. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here talking today about uh, um, financing sustainable tourism development for small and medium-sized firms. Yes? Um, this is part of the research that I was doing at the OECD until 2015 and then as an external advisor. Yes? And so, moving to the presentation, these are, okay, um, I did a message that you need to speak loudly, is that okay now? It, it's much better, thank you very much. Thank okay, you. okay, super. Um, so, I would like you to remember these six messages from my presentation. Yes, um, I'm going to mention them uh, one by one now, and then uh, in these 15 minutes I'm going to develop them, and then I welcome your, your, answer, your questions uh, later. Yes. So my message number one is that the instruments and the institutions to find alongside the life cycle of the firm. It is not the same to, to it is not the same to finance an existing and viable firm than to finance a new endeavor, a, firm, uh, a project that has not been yet validated by the market. Yes. Uh, message number two is that. There is already a whole range of finance instruments that can benefit the tourism firms. Yes, these uh, instruments are for the general SME sector, and with a small tweaks, uh, tourism SMEs uh, can, can benefit, adapting for seasonality or for the lack of collateral or, or other things. Yes, and that I'm going to develop later. Yes, um, along these lines, the message number three is that the tourism sector has peculiarities that justify having targeted support, yes? Um, message number four is that financing sustainability is a policy option in itself and also might justify policy interventions for okay. um, the, the message number five is that what we have seen in all the OECD surveys uh, for small and medium-sized firms in general, and also for tourism firms, is that technical assistance and capacity building are essential complements of finance instruments. Yes, in order to maximize the investment, um, entrepreneurs need to be uh, made aware of how to prepare financial reports well, and other things that they will develop later on. Yes? And one, the, the last message is that we need to increase data collection and define standards and systematization on what is sustainable finance, what is green finance, how, how does it interact with the tourism sector in order to better assess risk, environmental risk, and also to increase awareness of how much is going to each sector in particular. We know that hotels and the accommodation sectors are the ones getting problems in access to finance, uh, but we need to clarify for the other small sectors, entertainment, tourist guides, and all the rest. I'm going to develop that uh, later on. So, Svetlana, please, now we move to the first message. Yes. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, good. So here, I have, in this figure, I have put time and profit, yes, in the graph. So, uh, we see in the, the red um, uh, square means to signal that new firms green innovators, those who want to have a new process, a new product, a new business organization, are, um, are not yet economically profitable. And this is where public support makes more sense. Yes, and public support can come from 
either direct intervention in client tech ventures or more often indirect um, financing through grants, subsidies or tax incentives. Yes? Private support here in general comes from the network of the entrepreneur. Yes, friends and family, business angels or crowd funders, which they, they are able to observe some characteristic of the entrepreneur that, that he's responsible, driven, hardworking, that merits getting financed before being improved by the market. Yes? Once the firm starts operating, yes, um, it, is, it becomes less, um, how to say, it is less, um, um, the justification for the public intervention would be lower because if it is already viable, it should be able to find financing in the market. And we see there are plenty of private support. There are bank loans, venture capitalists, private equity, crowdfunding. And in general, public support here comes to is, uh, overcome the lack of collateral that the firm have, so in the form of credit guarantees to these uh, standard bank loans that they have. All of this financing in tourism SMEs along the life cycle is a direct contribution to the Sustainable Development Goal 12, which is achieving sustainable consumption and production patterns. Yes. So, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, this is from a 2014 report that, that there is a whole range of finance instruments beyond standard credit loans or equity stakes yes, that are available for SMEs and uh, we have mapped them uh, according to their risk, from the low risk to medium risk or too high, depending on the financial education of the entrepreneur, on the availability. So the, bank, the banking sector already, the financial sector already knows or knows, knows better than us, which is the finance instrument that is going to suit the needs of the firm. And these financial instruments that are for the general SME sector can be adapted for SMEs, for the tourism SMEs. And for example, in Greece, what they have done is that to foster um, tourism development in the Greek island, uh, they have adjusted the standard loans and in, during the high season, uh, the entrepreneurs repay principal and interest, and during the low season, only repay interest as a way to cope. The agriculture sector is also a sector that has uh, seasonality, so financial instruments should be uh, available also for the same financial instruments should be suitable for tourist SMEs with that problem, with the seasonality problem. And also, if uh, the development uh, relies on this uh, renewable natural asset, well, it's like the fishery sector. So existing financial instruments can be uh, tweaked to, to benefit tourism SMEs. Yes. Also, new instruments can be developed. Uh, here I have put the example of the green bonds, is that which are standard loans, but uh, targeted specifically for green energy purposes. I can expand that later on in the question and answers if you want. So next one, please. Yes. So my message, I believe it's message number three because I have a problem here with this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, is that tourism sector has, has some peculiarities that justify targeted support. And here I have put this uh, balance to show that in the tourism sector, there, there exists a high proportion, higher than on average than in the semi sector of fragmented, so small firms, informal, of low productivity, uh, entrepreneurs that have, do that as a subsistence activity, as a salary substitution, not, uh, not, they are not innovators. There is a higher proportion of underrepresented groups. I can explain that later on, if you want to just uh, lose time now. A higher proportion of family-owned firms or lifestyle entrepreneurs, couples who retire and then open a bed and breakfast, yes? who are not uh, truly innovators, but financing them is a contribution towards the Sustainable Development Goal 8.9, which is achieving inclusive growth. Yes, in the examples that we have seen um, from OECD and emerging economies, we have seen that microfinance or, or any other group lending strategy um, can, can serve these, these groups, uh, be, be, the financing needs of these groups, yes? And, there are specific tourism examples in Nicaragua, Philippines, and Dominican Republic of my 
finance, financing uh, tourism SMEs. Yes, there also coexist the other the other part of the of the balance. There, a small part of high growth and highly productive firms, which are young, innovative, benefiting from information and communication technologies. So, financing those firms is a contribution once again to achieving sustainable consumption and production patterns. Yes, and they are as well the finance instruments are sort of the standard ones that I have already mentioned, either direct public intervention or indirect through concessional loans or grants or partial credit guarantees. Yes, uh, the next slide, please. Yes, and as I said, it's not only uh, the tourism sector that might justify a targeted public support, but also financing sustainability per se. Yes, because we have seen that there are some challenges to, to those firms who want to um, transition to to a sustainable use of uh, resources in energy or inputs. Yes, and the problem the problems rely. We have mapped them like from the supply side. Yes, lack of suitable finance instruments because there is this incomplete integration of risk. Which the main problem is that there is not enough data. Yes, to better to to assess and to evaluate the the, the risk. There is also lack of expertise in the part uh, of the financial institutions on how to price the, the risk of environmental projects. Yes, and they tend to uh, overprice it, making charging a higher interest rate and and uh, making finance more difficult for them. Yes, the two risks that I have the in detail there, the indirect risk, is that the effect that the climate change has on your investment. For example, if you are building an, a road along a coastal area, is you need to, to take into account the effect that climate change is going to have on this road, yes, on, the, on, the, on that investment. And the other one that could be part of the other risk that I have seen in some in, in Italian um, paper that they have not to promote SMEs uh, in sustainable SME financing, they call it transition risk. They say, is all the changes in the rules and regulations in the market demand, the consumer changes in tastes, as well as in the technological innovations that render your investment obsolete. Yes. So this is part of the challenges from the supply side. And also the firms, this is a problem of lack of incentives to become green, yes, to, to transition to a, to greener patterns of use of inputs and of the of disposal of waste of waste. Sorry because of lack of expertise on one hand and because of these uh, misaligned reward structures that we have said is that they, we tend to overinvest in, in investments that are um, not environmentally friendly and underinvest in the ones that are sustainable. I can expand on that as well later on. But OECD has has uh, OECD research has proven that even though the cost of transition to uh, renewable energies has uh, decreased over time, it is still 10% higher to have a sustainable and efficient use of renewable energies than to, to use fossil fuels and uh, other type of uh, not environmentally friendly investments. Well, the next slide, please. So, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, yes, we have seen that in general for, for the SME sector, uh, technical assistance and capacity building are essential complements of the finance instrument. And here I have put an example of the National Development, Tourism Development Agency of Ireland, that they have this, what they call these business support tools, where they offer practical guides for entrepreneurs, templates to support the business planning, they help them in their preparing their financial requests, because also OECD's research has has shown that in general the entrepreneur goes to this the small one, the small and medium sized firm, they go to only one bank to ask for credit. And if the bank says no, they stick to that. Yes. And in general, also they allocate only one day to decide on the finance that they are going to get. Yes. Well, and one thing also that this um, national development um, tourism development has is this Um, to help uh, uh, um, tourism SMEs as well. Uh, the next one, please. So, my last uh, message is that 
uh, all, uh, all along this year, we have seen that for the SME sector in general and for tourism SMEs in particular, there is not enough data. Yes, so we need to increase uh, this data collection and define uh, standards and define and systematize what is considered sustainable finance. Yes, standardized definitions, what is green finance, and Italy also they propose to, to tag the standard credit loans that have a green objective to tag them, yes, to the sustainable development objectives in order to have to increase awareness and to well have enough evidence to see which sector or which subsector within the SMEs is going is getting finance, which ones are not that are still in need. Yes. This uh, better data collection is going to help assess this environmental risk and also increase awareness uh, of these uh, subsectors uh, which are in need of finance as well. Okay, so these are the six messages uh, that I have um, synthesized for you for this presentation. They are, and they are based on these um, reports that you have, you will have the link there on the presentation and one forthcoming at the end of the year. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. I hope to have been clear. Okay, and I welcome your comments, suggestions, and questions in the questions and answer part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Virginia, for this wealth of information on uh, financing sustainable uh, tourism in SMEs. Um, I look forward to the Q&A session and to a feedback on the, your six key messages. Um, as a reminder to all the attendees to this webinar, Please do send in any questions to Virginia uh, from now through the question box that you have on the right side, uh, right hand side of the webinar tool. She will be answering them at the webinar during the Q&A session that we will have. So it's now time to introduce our second presenter. We will listen to Mr. Vasilis Karakousis, uh, Environment and Sustainability Ma Manager at Temes uh, SA in Greece. Vasilis is a Sustainability Senior Executive with more than 19 years of diverse professional experience. He worked in London from 98 to 2000 as environmental technology consultant at the Interdepartmental Center for Environmental Technology of Imperial College, now Center for Environmental Policy, and in Corinth Pipeworks as quality certification manager. In 2009, he joined Temes, uh, the developer of Costa Navarino. Vasilis, you have 15 minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Cecilia, for your kind introduction and uh, good afternoon to all our participants. Uh, my name is Vasilis Karakousis. I'm the Environment and Sustainability Manager of Temes, uh, which is a premier destination developer and operator in the high-end tourism and real estate sector. Temes is the developer of Costa Navarino, one of the largest tourism investments in the Mediterranean and the biggest tourism-related investment in Greece. Today, in this brief, I will talk about the world tourism, how we implemented our vision with the development of Costa Navarino, and the measurable impact that this investment on sustainable tourism had to the development of the local economy with special focus on the SMEs that constitute the vast majority of the enterprises in the region. Uh, in this map of Greece, you can see the region of Messenia in the south, uh, southwest part of Peloponnese, Costa Navarino, when fully developed, will comprise five distinct sites and the investment will exceed 1 billion euros. So far, we've completed the first phase of the investment, reaching 580 million euros in two areas, Navarino Dunes and Navarino Bay, including five-star hotels, signature golf courses, conference centers, and spa facilities. Next, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just to give you a glimpse of Messenia, Messenia is a region with one of the highest biodiversity ratings in Europe in uh, terms of both species and ecosystems. At the close, dis at the close distance from Costa Navarino, extends Yalva Lagoon, one of the most significant wetlands in all Europe. Yalva Lagoon has a unique and diverse bird population comprising 271 different species, and is also home to Europe's only population of African chameleons. You can see them there hanging in the picture. The Romanos Beach, with a characteristic sand dunes, is also a nesting place for the sea turtle Careta Careta. Next, please. With 4,500 years of history, Messenia is home to Mekinian palaces, 33 castles, three UNESCO World Heritage sites, and many more historically significant monuments, all in close driving distance. Next, please. 
As we all know, behind every sustainable investment, there's a vision. The creation of Costa Navarino began with a vision of its founder, Captain Vasilis Kostatakopoulos, to place his homeland Messenia on the world tourist map and directly link the company's inclusive and sustainable economic growth with the sustainable development of the overall destination of Messenia. Next, please. The implementation of this vision is based on our belief that the private sector must become a driver of innovation through investments that can create new jobs and economic development based on the principles of sustainability, especially at this time of worldwide political and economic uncertainty. Next, please. Our business model uses sustainable tourism as a propulsive industry to create the necessary momentum for the inclusive and sustainable economic development of a whole destination. It creates linkages with agriculture and service providing sectors and simulates the development of basic infrastructure like construction of roads, airport facilities, and the provision of financial services from which the local economy as a whole can benefit. The revenue generated by the increase in tourism arrivals has a positive direct impact on a series of local SMEs from a wide range of economic sectors incorporated in the tourism value chain. As these companies buy goods and services from local suppliers, the positive impact from tourism development on the income and the employment in the local community is multiplied, creating a vibrant local economy. Next, please. The development model that we apply in Costa Navarino has the following targets. Increase tourism, tourist arrival, enhance attractiveness and awareness of Messenia, create a climate of new tourism investments, extend the tourist season, support the local economy, support local businesses, create new jobs, and protect and promote Messenia's natural wealth. Next, please. Some key figures from the operation of Costa Navarino reveal how sustainable tourism can become the driving force for development, extending its positive impact in the economy, the society, and the environment. Kalamata International Airport was the third fastest growing airport in Europe for 2015 and the fastest growing in Greece during 2015. The increase in arrivals has a significant direct impact on the local economy as 88% of, of passengers stay at local hotels and small accommodations for, across the entire Peloponnese and only 12% at Costa Navarino, establishing a remarkable need for new tourism investment. The increase in passenger arrivals from 2009, which is the year that um, Costa, the, the year prior to Costa Navarino operation, until 2016 is 274%, while the increase of international aircraft arrivals from 2009 until 2016 is 370%. For 2017, an additional increase of 13.6 in passenger arrivals and 16% in aircraft arrivals versus 2016 invested more than 4 million euros in attracting new airlines. Next, please. The operation of Costa Navarino is enhancing the international awareness and attractiveness of Messenia. More than 600 journalists from top international media visited Messenia between 2010 and 2016. 50% of their coverage has focused on the region, including visits to archaeological sites, meals at local restaurants and excursions, while from 2010 until today, over 27,000 articles promoting Messenia and the region development have been published to national and international press. Next, please. Extending the tourism season, the International Airport of Kalamata, now named Captain Vasilis Kostadokopoulos, opens and closes the Greek tourist season with flights operating from February until the end of November. Costa Navarino introduces different forms of tourism, like golf tourism, sports, and rural tourism, that enhance the overall tourism product of the destination and give added value to the region. At the same time, Costa Navarino creates and attracts major international events in sports and business that promote the region as a whole. Next, please. Now let's see how the value generated through the operation of Costa Navarino is distributed to the local economy. The economic impact of the Costa Navarino investment in Messinia from the beginning of construction in 2008 up to now is estimated at over 1 billion euros. The indirect economic impact in Messinia in 2014 from the operation of Costa Navarino was 117.4 million. The important thing is that for every euro spent from our visitors to Costa Navarino, 1.65 is spent in the region of Messinia. A characteristic example of the benefits of the local economy are the local food businesses, which earn an annual income of around 2.25 million euros from the 75,000 meals ordered by Costa Navarino guests throughout Messenia. Temes has spent more than 15 million on infrastructure works for the benefit of the entire region, including water management studies, road network studies, water distribution networks, 
for the municipalities, road construction, and many others. Next, please. In 2016, we cooperated to, uh, with 2,288 vendors, with the majority of them being SMEs. 83% of them are located in Greece, with 20% being suppliers and business operating in Messenia. In 2016, our payments to suppliers totaled 32.9 million euros, while in 2015 reached 24.8 million euros. The percentage of our procurement budget spent on Messenia and suppliers from 12% in 2015 reached 19% in 2016. A characteristic example of collaboration with local SMEs in order to acquaint people internationally with the region's gastronomy and history is the development of high-quality food products and art objects from the Peloponnese under the brand name Navarino Icons. Navarino Icons products are available in Costa Navarino and in more than 600 international landmark venues such as Harrods, Max Spencer, Dinner De Luca and many others, while served at the business classes of international airline companies such as GN Airlines, Saudi, Lufthansa, British Airways and Air France. Next, please. We pay special attention in helping all our vendors, and mainly local SMEs, to adapt their production processes to high-quality international standards. This has a double benefit for these companies because, apart from, provide, from getting a secured market for their products in Costa Navarino, local SMEs have the opportunity to obtain valuable know-how in marketing and export procedure and expanding their market share and revenues. Seminars for the dissemination of best practices in agricultural development and the promotion of exports of local products are organized by Captain Vasilis and Carbon Kostatakopoulos Foundation with the cooperation of specialized scientists and local authorities. In 2006, uh, the Captain Vasilis and Carbon Kostatakopoulos Foundation organized free seminars for food service professionals and producers of Messenia, providing valuable knowledge in the field of market outreach and presence to more than 120 businesses. Next, please. Creating jobs and new business opportunities for local people is a key priority for Costa Navarino. We intend to hire 17% of our associates from the wider region of Messenia. Costa Navarino provides an average of 2,200 jobs in low season. 900 new jobs are expected to be created by the new direct investment for the second phase of uh, development of Costa Navarino. And the most important thing is that for every new job created at Costa Navarino, 0.8 jobs are created in the region of Messenia. Next, please. Environmental protection has been a major design factor for the planning and construction phases through to the operation of Costa Navarino, materializing our firm belief that investing on the value of the ecosystems and protecting the local environment is a key driver for the development of the destination as a whole. In cooperation with Archelon, the Sea Turtle Protection Society of Greece, Temes has launched an extensive monitoring and protection program from Careta Careta since 2010 and supports programs for the protection of the African chameleon managed by the Hellenic Herpetological Society. Temes has initiated the biggest olive tree transplanting program in Europe in order to preserve biodiversity and the characteristic Messinian landscape covered with century-old olive groves. At this stage of development, 6,500 olive trees have been moved and replanted, while 800,000 endemic shrubs of different species have already been planted. More than 90% of Costa Navarino's total land surface remains unbuilt and is used primarily as natural or landscape green areas. Our sustainable water management system that covers the water needs of Costa Navarino without depriving resources from the local community through the use of water tanks storing the excess runoff from local rivers is used as a model of good practice from the regional authorities. In Costa Navarino, we apply sustainable energy waste management to improve resource efficiency and minimize greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emissions. Next, please. Together with Stockholm University and the Academy of Athens, we have established Navarino Environmental Observatory, a scientific observatory dedicated to the study of climate change and its impacts on the natural environment and human activities in the Mediterranean. With the same partners and a series of NGOs, we established Navarino Natura Hall, an interactive environmental exhibition center dedicated to the nature of Messenia that informs visitors, students, and locals about the uniqueness and beauty of the natural habitats of the region. Since 2012, together with the University of Peloponnese, we run Natura Hall, a special educational program for local schools that has so far been attended by more than 4,300 4, school children. Next, please. Our approach to sustainability has received worldwide recognition throughout a series of international awards and distinctions, with most prestigious the Tourism for Tomorrow Award in 2014, when the World Travel and Tourism Council named Costa Navarino the most sustainable destination globally. Next, please. 
Now we're working towards the next step. What is the next step? We want to see how the paradigm of sustainable tourism can bring together the notion of environmental protection with everyday business. We believe that designated protected areas like Yalova Lagoon can become the trigger point for business innovation through the establishment of small and medium-sized enterprises that benefit from the protection of the ecosystems. Sectors like organic farming, food processing, sustainable tourism could provide business opportunities for these kind of enterprises. Uh, the paradigm of Costa Navarino proves the significant potential of such an endeavor. Today, a substantial number of local businesses active in the sectors that I mentioned work together with Temes as part of our supply chain, while new businesses are established due to the overall development in the region. Next, please. The creation of local business networks in cooperation with private or public institutions could help new businesses better manage their risks, anticipate consumer demand, build position in growth markets, secure access to needed resources, and strengthen their supply chains. The measurement and reporting of the true ecosystem value could become the starting point for new business opportunities in the region, creating a new kind of entrepreneurship that links business development with the protection and preservation of vulnerable ecosystems. I would like to close this brief presentation by saying something that uh, it is the main principle in all our business activities. We strongly believe that the success of a tourist business is directly linked with its ability to share the benefits of its operation with the society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vasilis, for this very interesting and practical example of how sustainable tourism can support economic development and create business opportunities. Our third and last presenter, Mr. Salvador Leal, Chief of Staff at the Ministry of Tourism in Mexico. In his professional career, Mr. Salvador Leal uh, in his, professional, excuse me, in his professional career of more than 15 years, he has worked in the private and public sector, particularly in the financial field, in development banking within financial, rural and development agency of the Mexican government. He was in charge of the agricultural, rural, forestry and fishing sector and at the National Bank of Foreign Trade, Banco Mex. So, Salvador, please, uh, you have 15 minutes. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the people who are listening around the world. Um, my my job here is going to talk to you about a little bit about the things that we are doing here in Mexico to help a few of the SMEs and to uh, have a better integration of the value chain uh, for the tourism sector for the Mexican tourism sector. Uh, next slide. Uh, well, we, uh, we discovered uh, very early in the administration of the current uh, Minister of Tourism that uh, a lot of the um, buyers here in the, in the tourism sector, a lot, a lot of the great, the, the, the big buyers, uh, the big players here in the sector were importing goods um, such as meat and poultry and vegetables and fruits, uh, products that are uh, in, in which uh, Mexico is a leader or, or, or has a very good quality. Uh, we discovered about 70% of, the, of these goods were imported uh, at the main destinations in Mexico, such as Los Cabos, uh, Riviera Nayarit, and Cancun, Riviera Maya. Uh, so uh, with this discovery, we uh, developed uh, a strategy called Conectate al Turismo, uh, Connect to Tourism, uh, in which uh, it's a, a web platform, it's a closed website uh, where uh, buyers and sellers meet together to have an interaction. And so we asked the big buyers to give us a very specific needs uh, such as towels and fruits and vegetables, and uh, what type of um, of products they need, uh, the deliveries, the kind of uh, quality that they needed, uh, because in very informal in, in, in informal talks, uh, they told us that that they first they didn't know uh, that uh, the products were available were available. And then they thought that the quality was not good enough 
for the for the high end uh, part of the of the sector. Uh, so uh, we we try this website, this web platform, where the buyers uh, put a very specified uh, where, where they put very specific needs, and the sellers did the same. So we try to make that encounter, uh, and it did it did very well. Uh, we we did find a lot of sellers for the buyers, uh, for the buyers in the destinations. But we also discovered that a lot of the uh, sellers, a lot of the suppliers, uh, weren't prepared for uh, having this uh, integration, for having this uh, kind of interaction with the buyers. So uh, we, uh, we uh, discovered, we, we thought that uh, what they were needing was financing. And uh, uh, so, uh, next next slide, please. Uh, so we uh, we talked with uh, a lot of the of the players in the in the value chain of the Mexican tourism sectors, hotel. Um, that was the part of the buyers. Uh, but we also talked with the uh, service provider uh, providers and the suppliers from the agri-food uh, sector and also with small uh, business owners in uh, in other kind of destinations such as the magic towns uh, for uh, some of you that don't know what it what what a magic town what a uh, uh, um, uh, quote magic town uh, unquote is uh, it's um, a very small destination in Mexico that is uh, the most of them are not related with the sun and sand destination they are more uh, cultural and um, uh, uh, they're in the in the country not not uh, such as in the, in the beach uh, and uh, we, we talk with them, with the business owners uh, there in the magic town. We talk with the transportation, uh, with the transportation sector, uh, for finding some of the needs of the financing that they they, they had. Uh, next slide, please. And then uh, we uh, went to the um, to the bank. I'm, I'm sorry, to the development banking uh, sector here in, in Mexico. Uh, next slide, please. There are four main development banks that work with uh, the tourism right now. The first one is uh, Nacional Financiera or NAFIN. Um, they are very uh, focused on the SMEs and micro, uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. Um, we also talk with Banco Mext, that is uh, the leader in the tourism sector here in Mexico. Uh, the, uh, about a quarter of uh, the bank uh, work is for tourism, especially for hotels, uh, uh, hotels in the in the uh, and sand. And we talk also with the the two development banks, the, the two Mexican development banks that work for the agro-food sector, for the agricultural sector, uh, and that it's FIDA and FND. Uh, FND stands for the National Agricultural Rural Forestry and Fishing Development Fund. So uh, we talk with them and we try to uh, have a connection with them and the suppliers that they needed. Um, how we did we did that? Well, um, we went with them and work with a specific programs for each each, uh, each sector, each one of the uh, components of the value change that that I talked about. Uh, next one, next please. So uh, these are the programs that we developed with Bancomex, with Nafin and also with FIDA and FND. The first one is Bancomex, uh, that it's called Improve Your Hotel. It's a program that it's targeted to uh, the 
uh, mama and pops hotels that are here in Mexico. Um, uh, and it's uh, for uh, extension, remodeling, for uh, acquiring uh, equipment, for reconversion, and also for certifications uh, to acquire some kind of sustainability uh, at the hotels. Uh, we went also with NAFIN and we uh, developed a similar program, but this one uh, targeted to restaurants also for uh, uh, extension and remodeling of the facilities for working capital. Also with NAFIN, we went for uh, credit uh, for the suppliers of the tourism sector, for, uh, for example, the laundries at work, for uh, the hotels at the destinations. Um, uh, also, went, we went, uh, we have, a, we have um, a program uh, for these small businesses uh, that work with the transportation and uh, we are giving them credits for the acquisitions of the new of the new units or uh, for semi new um, in the magic towns the the product that i talked to you just a, a few minutes ago we went to the small and and uh, small medium and in the case of the magic towns uh, micro uh, businesses and we're working with them also uh, with credit via NAFIN. And finally, we are giving them also the service of factoring uh, because uh, well, when, uh, some of the suppliers, uh, they don't have the, the financial capability to wait to, for, for uh, being paid by the big buyers. So uh, we are giving them uh, liquidity uh, so they can uh, uh, have their, their uh, they can have the, their payments on time. With the um, FIDE, uh, uh, developing banks that work for the rural sector, um, uh, and uh, uh, the rural sector here in Mexico City, it's uh, established at uh, locations with less than 50,000 inhabitants. Um, uh, with them, we're working with uh, two aspects. The first one, it's uh, for ecotourism and for adventure tourism. We are financing boats, we're financing uh, motorbikes, uh, we're financing all the equipment for the small businessmen that, uh, to provide the, the services for this adventure and ecotourism service. And also, we are working with them, with these uh, um, development banks, uh, for the supplying of the foods. Uh, we were really astonished to, uh, to learn that the, the people in Mexico the, the were buying uh, avocado from Miami or from uh, California. Uh, since Mexico is the, the, the world's number one uh, producer of avocado. Um, so uh, we are trying to integrate all the producers, all the fruit and vegetable producers, and helping them through financing so they can sell uh, the, this, uh, their products to the, the, the big buyers in the uh, hotel and the tourism sector. So we are uh, giving them uh, via uh, FIDA and F&D uh, this uh, financing so they can uh, have um, access to this, to this market. Um, that we, we, are, um, having, we are giving them credit to, uh, uh, to dried products, fresh products, frozen products, uh, to the, to the, all, all, the, all the chain, all the chain uh, uh, and the frozen chain. Uh, for the part um, of the agri-food uh, sector. Uh, and uh, how are we, uh, well, what are the results? This uh, uh, Conectate al Turismo strategy started last April 2016. Uh, how are we doing? Next slide, please. 
Well, uh, these are a few of the results. Uh, uh, with the direct financing, uh, directly from the from the banks, we're having a total uh, approximate of uh, $245 million. Uh, and for the indirect, uh, with the financial um, uh, institutions, we are working with about $190 million, giving us a total of a total credit $435.7 million in uh, credit uh, from Banco Mext, Nafin, FIDA, and the FNB. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Well, this is uh, this is what we're doing here in Mexico. Um, this is the the programs that we're having here in Mexico, especially uh, targeted to the uh, micro and small and medium enterprises, uh, with the help of the of the um, uh, development banks, with the Mexican development banks. Uh, here are my my uh, my contacts. Uh, so, uh, well, thank you, and, and I'm looking forward for uh, some uh, questions. Thank you very much, Salvador, for such an enriching presentation. So, and to all the attendees, please do send in your questions uh, to Virginia, Vasili, or Salvador, or any other questions you would like to debate during this which we're about to start. I'll probably actually start with a question for Virginia, given that you were the first presenter and some questions have uh, already come in. So one of the questions is, um, you mentioned crowdfunding. What is, uh, what is the usage rate of this type of financial in instrument in SMEs? Um, okay, uh, crowdfunding as part of the finance instrument in general is still very low, but growing rapidly. Uh, crowdfunding is not new. Uh, Bartholdi, to, to build a Statue of Liberty in Paris in the last century, he used crowdfunding as a method to, to raise funds. Yes, And for tourism specifically, it is very, a very suitable instrument because crowdfunding has two legs. One is a rewards-based, so people fund their Go, give money to a project because they care about the local development strategy because they create jobs or they they promote the city or somehow and it's not for a financial reward but for let's say a free tour a night in a hotel or a weekend at a hotel so even this reward rewards based crowdfunding not with a financial objective can be very suitable for tourism and of course also for uh, those crowdfunders uh, looking for financial rewards because uh, what crowdfunding is is a way to monetize the your social connections yes now you don't need to give money to your friend uh, in person you can send it through the internet with a bank account okay is that clear Thank you, Virginia. <clears throat> that was uh, very clear, and I'm sure that if there are any follow-up questions, we'll see them in the in the chat uh, as as we move along this Q and A session. As uh, now, I have one uh, one question also for you, Salvador, which is uh, how willing were established businesses in taking the risk of buying from small and emerging businesses which may not have a proven track record? Yeah, well, they need a a, a little push. <laughs> they um, they need uh, that the the Ministry of Tourism could vouch for them, and we we are doing that. Uh, these are small businesses. Uh, well, we are we are um, uh, investigating them first. We are helping them first. Uh, so uh, they're reeling the the they're reeling good stuff, and 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 uh, they they having good quality. So uh, the Ministry of Tourism is very involved with them uh, because, uh, well, we are, that's the word, we're vouching, we're champion, uh, we, we're the champion for these small, small businesses uh, that are emerging. And also, uh, in the case of FIDA and uh, FND, they are very, uh, uh, they're very familiar with working with uh, rural uh, producers that do not have any um, financing track record. 
so uh, they are very flexible for that if they are small if they are uh, if there is the first time they're uh, entering in the financing sector um, remember here in Well, not very, but we have a, a low integration, a low banking uh, tradition for this, uh, for for the micro and small businesses. Uh, so, um, FIDA and F and D have uh, have an expertise on, on working with that. And I'm also reading about the the interest range that the the Mexican banks charge to develop new projects. Well, it depends. Uh, it depends. It goes uh, from uh, maybe nothing. It's uh, it's charging uh, the, their um, intermediaries about uh, 16 percent. Um, but in the case for uh, of FIDA and uh, or an F and D that work with the rural sector, uh, I think they're charging a seven percent. And uh, if you're a woman. Uh, I, I, it's uh, 6.5 because they also want to incentivate that uh, uh, woman in the rural sector uh, come with uh, to, to the to the tourism uh, with the, with projects. Thank you, thank you, Salvador, for this uh, for this response. Um, Vasilis, I also have a question here, Chad, for you. Um, <clears throat> so, what were the challenges in gaining the local community's approval and support uh, for the developments that you described? Well, uh, <laughs> that's uh, well, that's a very interesting one because uh, when we started the planning of this investment uh, in the area, there was absolutely nothing. So you have to get everybody understand and imagine how the area will develop like in five or ten years. Uh, the key I think in, in that is trust, it's like building trust with all the stakeholders and the only way to do that is to be open from the first day of development and, and just inform everybody of what you're planning to do and what will be the implications and the opportunities for the local community. So what we did, we had like uh, open sessions and workshops and seminars in the area with the local community that we presented the ideas and we presented the planning and uh, we explained that uh, this project uh, will bring benefit to the area and that we want to do exactly the opposite of what the resorts are doing, that resorts are closing people in. We wanted to bring people in Messenia uh, so that uh, the local businesses will benefit, the restaurants would benefit, the agriculture sector would get uh, a steady market for the products so everybody starts seeing that uh, a business that uh, it is open and wants uh, people to cooperate uh, all together uh, will will bring development in the area and i think this uh, was the key for having uh, i believe the widest acceptance as an investment in greece Thank you, Vasilis. And in fact, we have already a follow-up to the to this question that has been just uh, inputted in the chat, um, which is really about also the the, the increased uh, tourists uh, and airports. The airport, so of course, the part of uh, involving the local communities, and there's of course the the sustainability strain that these things can can place on the area. So they were just wondering um how prepared or how much how uh, how much you had anticipated these big increases uh and the strain they might have on uh sustainability uh, well uh, actually this increase is not bringing a strain but it's bringing actual development in the area because uh, messenia was not an area with a high tourism and gradually started becoming a, a destination a world destination so uh, people were developing uh, small businesses around Costa Navarino. As I said, like 88% uh, of uh, people arriving in Messina just finds uh, accommodation in nearby hotels and, uh, and, and small uh, lodges. So uh, getting the example of Costa Navarino of how you can do a, a sustainable tourism, then this paradigm was expanded to other local businesses. So when people are uh, starting their small tourist business, they want to adapt like high standards of quality, which means uh, also uh, environmental protection standards. 
that uh, they will meet the requirements of uh, of the customers that are arriving in the area so by creating uh, like you know the, the, the giving the starting point from a, giving a quality start then you give a paradigm for the development of the area so that is what is happening at the moment in messenia thank you Vasilis. so i have another question which um, uh, is not addressed to anybody specific in the audience, but I would uh, guess that uh, Salvador and Virginia, you would be the best uh, place to uh, probably complement each other in the answer to this. So it builds on uh, Salvador's presentation and uh, at the National Fund that you've developed, and mentions that in Colombia there is uh, the, the the National Fund does not does not function as uh, you might hope for. So in this case, what, what could be the alternatives in terms of getting financing for SMEs in Colombia in the moment that uh, the National Fund it does not have an optimal um, structure? Uh, yeah, sure. It, well, it, it's, uh, it's very common. Maybe uh, the, the, the Fund of Tourism uh, has a few, a few problems. Um, the, the solution that we here in Mexico find was to work with other with other uh, other banks. Um, tourism tourism is a good business. Tourism uh, has uh, proven to be a very good business. So uh, if you could uh, uh, if you could show this to the financial institutions, well, there's appetite. The, um, and and they they um, they listen. So uh, maybe if for a part for the National uh, Fund of Tourism Development, uh, it's not so clear or it's not working so well. Uh, well, go with with other other development banks. That that's what we, we that we, we we did here. We went uh, to uh, to the banks that uh, weren't focused on tourism that aren't focused on tourism. Uh, the, 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 for, for example, nothing, it's, uh, it's targeted to the industrial sector, uh, but they find that tourism was good business and, uh, and, uh, well, we, we did that connection. Uh, we, we find that connection with them. Can I build on what, uh, Salvador has said? Please, Virginia, please. Okay, yes, um, I, I, I agree with the Salvador, and I'd like to highlight that the OECD is a public policy think tank, and what we always try to highlight is the need to have coherence and to build the coherent policies and synergies. And even at the OECD, we see that. On the one hand, we, at OECD countries, we promote sustainability, uh, but we also maintain for example, subsidies to agricultural fertilizers that are environmentally damaging. It's, uh, we need to, to build this uh, awareness <coughs> sorry, uh, <coughs> uh, among policymakers. And going, getting more concrete on this, um, at the local communities, at the municipalities, Mexico, for example, has an example on that. Is that you, we can start locally, yes, and uh, because the, the first problem of tourism SMEs is that they are very small size. So to build, uh, to build groups, create synergies that are among uh, tourism SMEs in different sectors and to get them organized and this builds on with the microfinance approaches that I mentioned before, having them as a group, yes, and uh, that um, which on one hand, it is diversified because you get the tourism, uh, the tour guides, the accommodation, the food suppliers, each one very small, but all of them, yes, with the same objective of having a local community development and acting as a whole, they select, they screen among themselves and they can go and present a plan to get finance. Yes? Is that clear? Thank you very much, Virginia, and uh, and Salvador for the response to this question. And Virginia, in fact, I have also a follow-up question to your presentation more specifically. Uh, you have mentioned uh, two groups during your presentations, innovators and fragmented informal groups. 
The latter is sometimes uh, considered more complacent, continuing with business as usual and daily operations. Do you know of examples of how they've been targeted to become more sustainable in their business operations? If they have, uh, if they are not themselves actively seeking to innovate or seek finance. Okay. Well, there is one strategy uh, in OECD countries that I, I myself, I consider it a lot, a bit short term, but in the short term it will do. That is that they are the OECD countries are willing. Uh, they they call it pick the willing. So they go and finance and they promote those entrepreneurs who are already. Uh, uh, and, and want to have uh, to develop an idea to, to become big performers or green innovators yes but this question also highlights the the need that we have in OECD and non-OECD countries to uh, increase awareness about what is sustainability because su sustainability is what enables you to continue to do what you are doing in the long run so it's for your own benefit and we need to educate both uh, the financiers but also the entrepreneurs that it is for their own good in the long term yes okay and i have one example of in mexico for example which also builds which with what i was doing uh, which was i uh, saying before is that, that they are local communities this i did in 2015 so i might not remember it uh, properly and salvador please correct me if i'm if i digress but what they do, they, they select at the local community and they provide training to all these um, entrepreneurs, which, which they do more of salary substitution, food or handicraft, but they get training at the local community on how to interact with the tourists, how to become more responsible in, in their interaction, and also in their, um, what they do with their, their waste, wa uh, disposal of uh, waste, okay? But yes, we need the, the overall idea is that we need to build capacity to understand that become greener is for their own benefit. Thank you, Virginia. And I think that uh, leaves a very good uh, final note to uh, to this uh, webinar. I think we've reached the end of our time, unfortunately. And I would like to thank you, uh, all three of you, Virginia, Vivasiris and Salvador for your excellent presentation as well as all the attendees to this webinar for the great questions you're chatting in. I would like to remind you that for those that we have unfortunately not had the time to respond to your specific question, please do send them to uh, Svetlana whose email appears on the screen now and she will be put she will put you directly in touch with with our speakers. Uh, so, uh, again, thank you all for your time today on this forward to continuing discussions on these topics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.